In 1988, Tun Resendel co-founded the Dutch animation studio Neo Geo. Neo Geo quickly became the largest 3D animation studio in the Netherlands, and one of the leading animation houses in Europe. Neo Geo created award-winning productions for large corporate clients such as the multinational electronics company Philips. Within Neo Geo, Tun was responsible for both art direction and internal software development, and after careful deliberation, Tun decided that the current in-house 3D tool set for Neo Geo was too old and cumbersome to maintain, and needed to be rewritten from scratch. In 1995 this rewrite began, and was destined to become the 3D software creation we all know as Blender. As Neo Geo continued to refine and improve Blender, it became apparent to Tun that Blender could be used as a tool for other artists outside of Neo Geo. In 1998, Tun decided to found a new company called Not A Number or Inan as a spin-off of Neo Geo to further market and develop Blender. At the core of NAN was a desire to create and distribute a compact, cross-platform 3D application for free. At the time, this was a revolutionary concept as most commercial 3D applications cost thousands of dollars. NAN hoped to bring professional-level 3D modeling and animation tools within the reach of the general computing public. And NAN's business model involved providing commercial products and services around Blender. In 1999 NAN attended its first SIGGRAPH conference in an effort to more widely promote Blender. Blender's first SIGGRAPH convention was a huge success, and gathered a tremendous amount of interest from both the press and attendees. Blender was a hit, and its huge potential confirmed. Following the success of the SIGGRAPH conference in early 2000, NAN secured financing of 4.5 million euros from venture capitalists. This large inflow of cash enabled NAN to rapidly expand its operations. Soon NAN boasted as many as 50 employees working around the world trying to improve and promote Blender. In the summer of 2000, Blender 2.0 was released. This version of Blender added the integration of a game engine to the 3D application. By the end of 2000, the number of users registered on the NAN website exceeded 250,000. Unfortunately, NAN's ambitions and opportunities did not match the company's capabilities and the market realities of the time. And this overextension resulted in restarting NAN with new investor funding and a smaller company in April 2001. Six months later, NAN's first commercial software product, Blender Publisher was launched. This product was targeted at the emerging market of interactive web-based 3D media. Unfortunately due to disappointing sales, and the ongoing difficult economic climate, the new investors decided to shut down all NAN operations. The shutdown also included discontinuing the development of Blender. Although there were clearly shortcomings in the then-current version of Blender, such as a complex internal software architecture, unfinished features, and a non-standard way of providing the GUI, the enthusiastic support from the user community, and customers who had purchased Blender Publisher in the past, meant that Tun could not justify leaving Blender to fade into insignificance. Since restarting a company with a sufficiently large team of developers was not feasible, Tun Resendel founded the non-profit organization, Blender Foundation, in March 2002. The Blender Foundation's primary goal was to find a way to continue developing and promoting Blender as a community-based open-source project. In July 2002, Tun managed to get the NAN investors to agree to a unique Blender Foundation plan to attempt to release Blender as open source. The Free Blender campaign sought to raise €100,000 so that the foundation could buy the rights to the Blender source code and intellectual property rights from the NAN investors and subsequently release Blender to the open source community. With an enthusiastic group of volunteers, among them several X9 employees, a fundraising campaign was launched to Free Blender. To everyone's surprise and delight the campaign reached the €100,000 goal in only seven short weeks. On Sunday, October 13, 2002, Blender was released to the world under the terms of the GNU GPL. Blender development continues to this day, driven by a team of dedicated volunteers from around the world led by Blender's original creator, Tun Resendel. Since 1994, and until now new versions of Blender have been continuously released, as we speak the latest Blender version is version 3.3. When a program is licensed under the GNU General Public License, the GPL, you have the right to use the program for any purpose. 
You have the right to modify the program and have access to the source codes. You have the right to copy and distribute the program. You have the right to improve the program and release your own versions. In return for these rights, you have some responsibilities if you distribute a GPL program. These responsibilities are designed to protect your freedoms and the freedoms of others. You must provide a copy of the GPL with the program so that recipients are aware of their rights under the license. You must include the source code or make the source code freely available. If you modify the code and distribute the modified version, you must license your modifications available under the GPL or a compatible license. You may not restrict the licensing of the program beyond the terms of the GPL, you may not turn a GPL program into a proprietary product. For more on the GPL, check its page on the GNU project website. Note: The GPL only applies to the Blender application and not the artwork you create with it. For more info see the Blender license. Being freely available from the start, even while it was closed source, considerably helped Blender's adoption by the community. A large, stable, and active community of users has gathered around Blender since 1998. The community showed its support for Blender in 2002 when they helped raise 100,000 euros in seven weeks to enable Blender to go open source under the GNU GPL license. There are several independent websites such as forums, blogs, news, and tutorial sites dedicated to Blender. One of the largest community forums is Blender Artists, where Blender users gather to show off their creations, get feedback, ask and offer help and, in general, discuss Blender. Blender's community is one of its greatest features, so apart from this user manual, there are many different ways to get support from other users, such as Blender Chat and Stack Exchange. For studios and organizations there is enterprise support, and for studios looking to add Blender to their pipeline, Blender Studio contains documentation and training material around this topic. If you think you have found an issue with Blender, please report a bug. More details about support can be found on the support page. Being open source, Blender welcomes development from volunteers. Communication between developers is done mostly through three platforms, where I left for you the links of these three platforms in the video description below. For real-time discussion, there is the Blender chat, which uses Blender ID for authentication. And I left its link for you as well. If you would like, you can support Blender financially through the donation page, and you can find its link in the video description, together with the rest of the links that you might need to get to know Blender as the next industry standard in 3D graphics. This video, together with the introduction video, we went through everything you need to know before starting your Blender journey. In the coming videos I will be talking more technically. To support my effort please don't forget to like, comment to this video, and subscribe to the channel, it means a lot and will give me a boost to create as many videos as I can.